here in Armagh where we have the replay of the Senior Hurling Championship between uh, Keady and Middletown and of course Simon uh, what can we say here we had a great match on it I know the score wasn't very high but the drama and everything was brilliant and again we're back here tonight to see and the conditions after the rain we've had today and everything the pitch is in perfect condition it is I think great credit to the ground staff here Damien you know Ronan Hart and, and, and everybody who works here so hard in the athletic grounds pitch looks in absolutely wonderful condition it's dry at the minute which is good you know we've had a lot of rain here today in our and you know the, the pitch seems to be looking pretty good uh, it's the Cormac Leonard sponsored uh, uh, replay of the championship final again last week it, it was a it was a, a contest that was pretty even throughout the I mean you know Middletown had the, the better of the first half exchange they went in a few scores ahead Katie had much the better of the second half and I'm sure we're having a we're, we're ready for another enthralling contest ahead look there's no question about it and uh, to be fair you know from a total absolutely neutral point of view the other night I thought a draw was uh, the perfect result because I don't think either team deserved to lose and uh, I don't think either team deserved to win I agree I think you know definitely what your first point both teams didn't deserve to lose I think both teams deserved another a bite at the cherry another day out and uh, you know I think that the, 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 the focus this week will have been on recovery trying to get the bodies ready for another game it's a short turnaround six days and uh, I'm sure that these guys you know they know how to recover themselves well they know what, what needs to be done in terms of their preparation so I'm sure that they're ready to perform. Well, look, it's a county final, and they don't come around that often. So good luck to both teams here this, this evening in the athletic grounds here where the crowds are starting to come in. We had a great crowd the other night. There's no, no doubt about that. And, of course, uh, hopefully the, the teams will be well supported here tonight because, you know, you couldn't just pick a winner. Absolutely. You know, we really do have uh, a brilliant 60 minutes ahead, 60-plus minutes, you know, this All Ireland weekend, Damien. You know, it's going to be a, fe a feast of hurling tonight, and it'll be a feast of hurling on Sunday, and we're lucky to be here. Well, just as we said, that we kicked off our, our hurling weekend here and delighted to do it, and great to have you back because I know you enjoyed it the other night, and now we'll have you uh, hooked in here, so you've got <laughs> the bug. So you're very welcome. And again, the All Ireland final's on on Sunday, and uh, I was at the semi final last week, and to be fair, you know, it was a fairly good match, but it there was something missing from it you know I don't know what you call it uh, you know it was tight and it went down to the wire and teams made mistakes referees made mistakes and all sorts of things and I, I suppose thinking about the whole thing from last weekend uh, Tyrone maybe the team that can maybe match Dublin I don't know but when we went back to the Harlan a week or two before that time the atmosphere the crowd the thrills the scores it just had everything. Absolutely. I think Galway have proven that they're, they're, they're worthy All-Ireland champions. You know, it's a sign of a great team to get back into an All-Ireland final the year after winning it. And, you know, Limerick have been the team this year that everybody has been speaking about right from the National League. And Limerick actually beat Galway when it mattered in the National League. Uh, round five, both teams had won four games. Whoever won that match was going to get promotion to Division 1A for next year. And Limerick beat them in the Gaelic rounds that day. And I certainly took note of it. You know, I, I kept an eye on them throughout the league, and I, I took note of that result because I thought that Limerick they looked like a team who could physically match Galway. You know, and um, compared to everybody else across the country, that's the one thing that stood out to me then. So you're back in Limerick. I fancy Limerick. I think that you know, if the game is tight with uh, maybe six or seven minutes to go, I think the energy that they have in their legs with the youth. A lot of those guys would have played together right from sort of under fourteen, under fifteen academies, and, and they know each other so well. So. But when you have somebody like Joe on your team, youth but doesn't mean anything. Oh, absolutely. You know, it, it, the guy is just, I don't know what you call he's a god. Absolutely. You know, yeah. and the things he can do with a hurl and the things he can do with a slither, just normal people can't do that. Well, isn't it amazing that, that everybody who's listening to us and everybody across the country who watches the game on Sunday, the commentators will say Joe is on the ball. And everybody knows it's Joe Canning. And I think that's a mark of the man that everybody knows the talent that he has, the, the special sort of player that he is. And as you say, Damien, you know, Galway are the All Ireland champions, they're the All Ireland champions for a reason, and anything could happen on Sunday. Well, we're looking forward to a cracking game, so uh, you're going to nail your colours to Limerick. I think I'll go with Galway. I have a wee soft spot for Galway. Uh, we have the referee, the referee, and his linesman come out there. Who's the referee this evening, Simon? The referee is Noel Milani. He's a Monaghan man, and uh, he's, I'm sure he's, uh, he's ready for the action this evening. Good stuff, and we wish. No, and I see Mick Loft is out there, and is that Davy Crawford as well? I'm not sure. I need to get the glasses on here to see. No, maybe that's not Davy. 
But uh, that's Mick anyway, we Mick from Dublin, the Dublin man. Uh, he referees, uh, no that's not David, he, he referees all over the, the county and uh, he's a very well knowledgeable man. Oh. He's refereed a lot of hurling games and he's refereed a lot of football matches. Good, good. Well, you know, the officials last weekend did a good job, you know, and I think it led to an exciting contest both in the junior final and in the senior final. And, uh, you know, I'm sure the referees and their officials this evening will be wanting to keep a, t a keen eye on everything. And, uh, you know, Hopefully, yeah, the, game, the game, game will go ahead. So, we have uh, the Hurling Weekend. The Hurling Weekend starts off this evening here in the Athletic Grounds. Simon, you know, just a, a, a fact here. This is one of the most used stadiums in the whole of Ulster, in uh, the whole of the country. It is, and I, I, I think that we are very, very lucky as our Mala people to have such a brilliant, brilliant facility here. You know, even coming into the ground, you get a sense of the atmosphere, you get a sense of, of belonging, the sense that the uh, this is a special place. And you know, I think the lights will be on maybe later on as the the night gets a little bit darker, and that'll only lead to a more special finish to the game. And I look out and I see striped jerseys and I see numbers and it's a commentator's nightmare, you know. Uh, so, you know, I, I remember way back in the in the day when Newcastle United was playing and uh, they were playing the FA Cup final and they got beat that time. But somebody had said then, would they ever play with the, the big white square with the number on it? And that's what they've done. I know what you mean. I know <laughs> it's, it's, it's going to be a test for the eyesight the, the, yeah. this evening now, Damien, but uh, that's what the glasses are for, for the two of us. I think, well, we're looking forward to a cracking game. We're, we're not too far away from the start of the game. So wherever you are this evening, let us know. We're getting very close to throw in. So wherever you are, if you're tuned in, let us know where you're listening in and where you're watching the game. One great thing about this, you know, you can be in any part of the world. And you can be watching, and for that hour and 10 minutes or 20 minutes, we have you on the cusp of the hand here in the athletic grounds. And anybody that's homesick, Simon, we dispel that for the game because uh, the people's with us. Absolutely. We had, we had listeners from Canada, if I remember right, Damien, from last week, Colin Moore and a Middletown man. And uh, I'm sure that Colin and, and uh, the others all across the world are listening intently and watching intently as well. So and even up as far as North Antrim. Absolutely. We have, we have, we have friends in, in, in from Kerry Falls just outside Ballycastle, Kieran that is watching the game this evening. So, Kieran, if you're if you're watching and you're listening. Send us a wee message via Twitter to, to us here and we'll, uh, <laughs> we'll let you know what, this, what the crack is. So, that's the way it's going to pan out here. But, Simon, you know, uh, I get a bit of a buzz when I hear... The All Ireland final. When I hear the hurling, you know, I've been at the Puck Fatter several times. Didn't get this year, but I, I have, I love the Puck Fatter. I love the ethos of about it. I love uh, the thought of Hugh Holland drifting back through the mists of time, back to the Cooley Mountains, back to folklore and Gaelic legends, gods, gods to us all. Absolutely. And that's what hurling, you know, that's what hurling is telling me that's what it's about well I think you know over the last number of weeks we've watched the program and many of us have watched the program on RT the game Damien and you know it's been a special reminder of, of what a what a wonderful sport what a wonderful association that we have with the game our national game our culture our heritage and we're very lucky people look I, I, I absolutely agree with you there because there's no other sport in the world there's no other organisation like this in the world and that alone it's community based and if you have tragedy Everybody's behind you. It doesn't matter. Everybody's there to support you. And that's what the Gaelic clubs do. They come out and they support, they support people in their need. And then they give us the wonderful games that they give us. And, you know, we talk about All-Ireland Finals. This here tonight is an All-Ireland Final for these two clubs. It is. It is. These two guys, well, these two teams will have been looking forward to this game all week, but all year, you know. I'm sure that they would have looked at last week as... As a semi-final almost, you know, they drew the first game, but it's another chance to play in a county final. Well, here's how I look at it. Over the two games, the best team wins. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, we, we had a draw last week. We had two teams that might have been a little nervous as the, as the game sort of started, and those nerves might have continued as the game went on, Damien, but I'm sure that any, any nerves or anything will be out of the system this evening. They'll just be ready to express themselves. Well, what we'll do is here, we'll call the teams out. We believe... Simon, that the teams are as the programme says. So away you go there with uh, so the Middletown. Absolutely. The Middletown team will line out as follows. In goals, Fintan Woods, number one. Number two, Brian Mallon. Number three, Paul Gaffney. And number four, Oren Curry. The half-back line, number five, Parry Hughes. Number six, Tiernan Nevin. Number seven, Kieran McKernan. Midfield, number eight, Patrick McBride. And number nine, the captain of the team, Nathan Curry. Number 10, David Carvel. 
his cousin number 11 Cahill Carvel and number 12 Marty Maguire. The full forward line number 13 Marty Moon, 14 Ryan Gaffney and number 15 Dean Gaffney. And we believe that's the start. We haven't been told and our PRO has, uh, hasn't said to us that things have changed. And then again when we look down the Katie team. Mm -hmm. So the Katie team will line out as follows. Uh, going by the programme, number one, Joby Burke, number two, Liam McKee, number three, Nathan Green, number four, Barry Breen, number five, Oshin Keenan, number six, James King, number seven, Eugene McDonnell. Midfield, number eight, Jim Short, and number nine, Stephen Renahan. Number ten, the half forward line, number ten, Paul McCormick, number eleven, Connor Corvin, and number twelve, Paul Green. Number thirteen, Rory Fullerton, number fourteen, Dylan McKenna. And finally, number 15, John Corvin. Well, if we have as good a match, okay, we're hoping there's more scores, that's for sure. But the drama that we had last week was fantastic. Uh, the hits that we had, and uh, it did sort of sort of get a little bit hot and bothered towards the end. But of course, that's what happens when you get the county finals. They're not easy won. They don't come around all the time. And I know that both of these clubs are very famous hurling clubs here in Armagh, and they, they have a lot of history. If winning this competition, of course, Middletown, I think they're going maybe for three or four in a row here. Mm -hmm. You know, four in a row. And uh, Katie's just coming back trying to stop that. And it's just too tight, Simon, to call. It is. It's, it's going to be a really enthralling contest, Damien. And we had, we had, we had a low-scoring contest last week. It finished eight points apiece. Probably a little bit disappointing in the scoring stakes. But it lacked nothing in terms of excitement and drama. You know, the, the physical nature of the game. These teams know each other inside out. These players know each other inside out. And I'm sure that, that, that both teams, they'll not want to lose this match. It's whether any team can take this game by the scruff of the neck and go and win the game. That's the key thing today. Well, you can't hide. There's no hiding places out here tonight. This is do or die. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, both teams uh, have been called to uh, across here. So I think we're getting ready now for the National Anthem. So we'll keep you posted on that. Katie's still in the huddle here on her left-hand side, having a good chat among themselves. Middletown, they're starting 15, have gone into the huddle. They're having their last little talk here. And uh, we'll see how it goes, Simon. Absolutely, Damien. So we just wait now to see what's happening with, uh, I suppose, that the National Anthem is going to be sung and people getting ready. And the crowd has come in here this last while. Good crowd here, Simon, this afternoon as well. It is. It's, pr it's probably not as, as many people that were here last weekend, you know, but uh, I'm sure that as the game's getting closer to throw in, I'm sure that the, the crowd are eagerly waiting the, uh, the action ahead. Well, we had two games last week, so maybe mm -hmm. this is just uh, because there's only the one game. And then, of course, people always just love to leave it late. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. A typical GA fashion. Leaving it late here this evening in the athletic grounds. And now we are going to stand for our national anthem. And uh, we await a cracking game of Harlan here. The replay, I always say, over the two games, the best team wins. And uh, I see Mick coming over here, uh, the legendary Dublin referee. I had a great chat with him there a couple of weeks ago. I'll tell you about it at half time. But uh, we look around, the referee's about to commence the game here. And uh, normally, I think the players are supposed to be outside the 265s. Is that not right, Simon? That's right, usually the 245s. But they're at the. Uh 
The ref is just letting it go. I'm just looking at it, uh, Damien. I can see one or two positional changes on the Middletown team. I see Patrick McBride, the midfielder. Patrick McBride is going in the centre half forward. And uh, Dean Gaffney has come out to the wing forward, number 15, wearing the blue helmet. So tactical changes away, and the game is on. And it's uh, Kieran McKernan on the ball now from Middletown, playing in midfield at the minute. Plays a low ball into the inside forward line. Marty Moan coming out there with his man. Moan and Barry Breen contesting the ball. It's a fight for possession there with Nathan Green. Nathan Green at the sideline, the 20 metre line, gets the clearance in, and he's just put it out over the sideline. And the first, the first sideline ball over to Middletown, the far side, and of course, Middletown are playing towards the Cathedral end here, and Katie playing towards the Dalton Road end here, so playing down the hill the first half with the breeze, Middletown. Uh, they are, they seem to be, the, the flags are suggesting that there's a, a strong breeze with Middletown, but uh, not as strong as last week, but uh, we'll see how that pans out as the first half goes on. Marty Maguire has the ball just in the corner flag now, Plays it back outside to Gaffney to Marty Moan. Moan takes the strike, but it's blocked down. Nathan Green, bit of a frontal tackle on Nathan Green there as he, he wins the free out for Katie. Yeah, that's the first free, the well, the, the, the first hard free of the afternoon uh, this evening. So uh, and he's saying a wee bit of bother over there. So the referee, well, the referee runs on. He's not getting too bothered about it. So uh, that's Green. just maybe sending out a, a message here, lads. Let's get on with it. Absolutely, Green seems to be holding his head over on the far side. I think he took a fairly hefty tackle there, Damien. So uh, I think he did, you know. But uh, I think he's made a tighter and harder stuff. So I, I assume that man will be up and ready to go here. Absolutely, uh, no one, Nathan. He's he's he's, uh, he's played with with Arma for a number of years, underage and senior, and uh, he's ready for action again. And of course, last week the left hand side of this goal and the right hand side of the other goal was causing havoc, but that was the breeze. It's not so bad here tonight. It seems to be a lot calmer so far, Damien. Burke with the free out for Katie, plays it up to the far 45. Nathan Curry under the dropping ball, but it's spilled in behind. Parry Hughes fights for the possession. And it's uh, it's Paul Green on the ball. Green plays a cross field ball. McCormick has gone loose. Paul McCormick for Katie. McCormick takes the shot. And the umpires have a look at it. It's the first score of the day, Damien. One nil to Katie. Yeah, Paul McCormick and uh, showing all his experience there just to slip that one over the bar from approximately 50 metres out. Absolutely, a fine score. Man of Paul McCormick's experience. You'd think nothing else as soon as he gets the ball in his hand, it's going straight over the bar. And the puck out is played on top of Ryan Gaffney. Now Gaffney fights for it again. Katie seemed to have the possession over there on the far side. A real scramble for possession. The referee has blown his whistle. Blown for over carrying. And it's a free in for Middletown just on the, uh, on the Katie 65 metre line. And again, with this breeze blowing down the field, Simon, this is well within uh, a good free taker's range. Absolutely. Well, Nathan Curry is a wonderful striker of the ball, and he'll have full, he'll be full of confidence that he'll be able to put this ball over the bar. Curry standing over the ball, 65 metres out. Takes a look at the goal. Settles any nerves that may be in the system. Bends, picks and strikes. The ball seems to be on target so far. The umpires look at it, but the ball's just gone outside and wide. Well, he got plenty of distance there, but the radar was well off, and you would expect them to go over the bar. You would. Maybe maybe Nathan's just uh, getting himself used to the breeze and the conditions out in the field. Maybe his first free, a difficult one from the 65-metre line. Burke plays the long puck out over towards the stand sideline, but it's gone out over the line. I just see, notice there that uh, Liam Woods has gone in, number 17, has gone into the Middletown team. And looking at the team and looking at their defence, I think it's Brian Mull, number two, that's been replaced. We'll keep you posted on that one as the mm -hmm. game goes on. A long ball in. Marty Moan fights for the possession out towards the sideline. Moan has the ball. He picks the ball. It's very, very close to the sideline over there. A big challenge from James King. The referee has blown his whistle and he's given a free in. Well, that was a hit in the back. But he got a good shoulder charge in the back. So the referee was absolutely right to give the free in there. But again, very, very tight angle right out along the sideline here. Just right down in the 13 metre line. Absolutely, just outside in the 20 metre line. If you, if you, if as a free taker, I'm sure Ryan Gaffney would want an easier one right in front of the goals as his uh, as his first free of the day. So by no means an easy free to start off. Just as we're we're keeping an eye on things, Damien, the, the crowd is starting to come in much further now, and I can see some of the RMI guys coming in, the county <laughs> players as well, giving a bit of a wave into the studio. So. Yeah, your, 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 your reputation is preceding you here, Simon. <laughs> you know, word has gone out. Simon's on the mic. So uh, Ryan Gaffney standing over the free now. Gaffney shooting into the, the cathedral end. Bends, picks, and strikes the ball. It looks pretty good from here. And it's all the way over the bar. First score for Middletown for Ryan Gaffney. One point apiece. Super score there for Gaffney, and that's for sure. 
So it's one apiece, and we have four minutes and 47 seconds gone. Absolutely. Uh, an entertaining start so far. Burke with the puck out. Plays it long on the right-hand side. Dropping around the midfield. Renan has the ball for Katie. Renan takes a look up. Plays a long ball into his inside forward line. Paul McCormick seems to have drifted into the right corner on Parry Hughes. Hughes has it. Fights for it. Nathan Curry fights for it as well with, Na with Tiernan Nevin as his cornerback teammate. Curry comes out with the ball. Blocked down well. Blocked down by Johnny Corvin. Corvin breaks outside to the 20 metre line. Back out to McCormick. McCormick takes the shot. And the ball is over the bar. Second point for Katie. And again, another super score there. From a very, very tight angle again, Simon. Absolutely. Well, McCormick, as I said earlier, a man of his experience. He'll know this place inside out. He'll know all the angles to shoot at. And uh, he just slipped out there looking for the looking for the pass. And uh, a fine score for Katie. Dean Gaffney contests the ball. Now Paddy McBride has it for Middleton. McBride breaks the tackle. McBride's... The referee is given a free in for a high tackle. McBride did well there to win the breaking ball, Damien. He, he did, and he, he, can pass to, he came out through two or three players there, and the players sort of got their sticks up around him, and he was busting through, and the referee gave the free. So again, this should be the equalising score. He did, and, and you know, looking out the field as, as a defender, as a goalkeeper, to see your forward line working hard, winning the dirty ball from your own pockets, that's absolutely a, bi a big plus, a big advantage. I would have to say, Simon, the way these numbers on the Middletown jerseys is brilliant. <laughs> We can actually read them. As you were saying last week, Damon, I think it maybe could be two different versions of the Middletown jersey. I think maybe one slightly slightly older than the other. I was, Ryan one, I was wondering what was going on there, because there was no ball nice going, what's he going to do here? <laughs> <laughs> so Ryan Gaffney again, he, he pointed his first effort. Uh, it was a very, very difficult angle right on the sideline at the 20 metre line. It's a much more generous angle here. 50, 50, 53 metres out. Gaffney picks, strikes. Looks good from here. All the way over the bar. Good start, Damien. Yeah, great start. And again, a little bit of uh, shenanigans going on here between a couple of players, but Gaffney puts that one over the bar. Absolutely. Well, these guys are just getting to know each other again. Burke with the puck out. Plays it low in front of Connor Corvin. Corvin takes it on his own 65. Looks Secret. across the field. James King has the ball now. King under pressure from McBride. Great pressure from McBride for Middletown. Oh, the referee has given a free out. I thought that looked like a shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder tackle, oh, Damien. That was soft. <laughs> that, you'll have to get in that in Crow Park on Sunday, that's for sure. There's a bit of pushing and shoving going on in around the midfield here. I think both sets of players just getting to know each other a little bit more. Yeah, and it, it is getting a little bit petulant. Well, the referee is now going down, Simon, to, to, to speak to a couple of players. And I think the best way to deal with that is just move the ball up. 20 or 30 yards absolutely just you know it's, it's a county final there are seven and a half minutes gone guys want to stamp their authority in this game and uh, no need for anything other than a quick word in the air Damon as you say well if I was the referee I would move the ball up and then that stops that stops it mm -hmm. so Connor Corbin's going to take this free from Katie he is approximately 55 metres out from his own goal so it's, uh, it's a pretty big distance now if Connor can land this one in around the edge of the square he'll be doing well especially into that breeze his stance seems to suggest that he's going to go for the shot here. The linesman is actually asking Connor to take the ball back a few steps. So, Well, th th this is a wee bit ridiculous because after all the shenanigans that was going on earlier on there, maybe that's the reason why they wanted to go back. But at the same time, normally the referee would move that ball up and it stops all that. Absolutely, absolutely. And Connor's on the ball anyway. Connor plays the ball long into the right-hand side. Looks for Stevie Ranahan. Ranahan takes the ball really well under pressure from Warren Curry. Ranahan takes the shot. It's hanging. It's looking good from here all the way. That's a point for Stevie Renahan for Katie. Best score of the game so far. He went up very high and caught that from down under pressure and spun and hit it over the bar. Great score. A brilliant score. Stevie Renahan, the vice captain of the county team this year, leading by example for Katie in midfield. Fintan Woods with the puck out now for Middletown. Taking a look at the options that he has, plays it to the left-hand side. He's aiming for Davy Carvel out there. Carvel jumps. And it's flicked on by the, the, the Katie defender. Nathan Green's backtracking towards his own goal. Green has it, gets the clearance in out to the left-hand side. But that ball has just gone out over the line. Yeah, just underneath us here, so it's a line ball. Just beside Mick. Looking at the uh, the Katie team, it seems that number 19 has come into the team as well. John Harvey. And we're just trying to keep an eye out who he's replacing now. So, Cahill Carvel with the ball from the sideline. Carvel's an expert sideline ball taker. He makes a decent connection with this one into McBride. And Dean Gaffney has it. Gaffney takes it on. Tries to break the tackle. The ref plays advantage. Gaffney takes the shot. And it has gone outside and wide. But, as I said, the referee is playing the advantage. So, he's, he's given the free for Middletown. Yeah, and again, he was given advantage there. So, uh, 
Somebody's coming out there telling everybody, calm him down, calm him down. Mm -hmm. There's a Katie man here, is it? It's the, uh, it's the, it's the Katie coach. He's wearing them way for about a guy called Pat O'Halloran. He's a Meath man. Very, very experienced coach. I think he was the, the coach of the Katie team that won the Ulster Intermediate Championship a number of years ago. So that man is, 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 uh, is very experienced in terms of his knowledge of this Katie group and he'll be wanting to do his best for the, the Katie team this, this evening. So Gaffney about to take the free, preparing. I see that the, the, the flags have picked up a little bit behind the goals, Damien. The wind seems to be getting a little bit stronger there, blowing yep. down the field. Gaffney picks and strikes. Caresses that ball over the bar. Gaffney's third point of the day. Again, it's dispatched with absolute ease, but yeah, the wind has picked up. I was out in the field earlier on there. There is a fair breeze blowing towards the cathedral end. So Burke with the puck out for Katie. Plays it low again, just over the head of Dean Gaffney into the, the Katie midfield. Warren Curry comes out with the ball. And the linesman has given the line ball to uh, to Katie. Ball was very, very close to the sideline there, Damien, just before the Katie man got it. But I think the linesman made the correct call. Now, Paul Green, he's getting ready to take this line ball. Paul Green, the younger brother of Nathan. Paul is actually a, a double college's all-star as well, Damien. Very, very, very talented young player. He must have got a clip of the hand there because the coach came out and just put some water on his hands. Green, lovely sideline ball in on top of Dylan McKenna. McKenna plays it on, but Curry's sitting in behind for Middleton. Plays it back outside to Cahill Carvel. Carvel with a long clearance into his half forward line. Ryan Gaffney has the ball. What a wonderful catch by Gaffney. Gaffney looking down his right hand channel. Tries to find Marty Maguire. It's beating Maguire into Marty Moore, but Maguire's on the ball again for Middleton. Takes his man on. Onto his left hand side. Will he take the shot? He takes the shot. It's. Wide. Looking good. Oh, the, the, the umpire's signal wide. Oh, I'd love to see Hawkeye on that one if we had it here in the athletic grounds. I'm not so sure that the umpire's got that one right, Damien. I mean, it looked pretty good from here, but we'll have to give them the, the benefit of the doubt. They were closer to the action than we were. Now, Paul Haney looks up and Paul thinks it could have been a point, but it mightn't have been one. <laughs> so, Burke plays the ball out to the half forward line. Paul Green, what a wonderful take by Green. Young Green has played a great game so far. McKernan with the high tackle, but the ref plays on. Jim Short has the ball, gives it back to Green. Green, will he take the shot? He looks up, plays a, a crossfield ball in, but it's straight to Paul Gaffney, the fullback from Middletown. It's a feature of, of Gaffney's game the last day. Damien, he was brilliant under the high ball, just as the tackle came in from Johnny Corvin. And it was a high tackle, the referee's looking for Corvin. It was, it was. And Corvin knows when he he done wrong that he's just got out of the road, he's just ghosted away, and the referee's just walking after him. So mm -hmm. <laughs> Corvin isn't getting away with this one, so he. There might, be a, there might be a card here brandished to Johnny. But uh, as I was saying there, Damien, you know, one of the key strengths of the Middletown game the last day was the, uh, the, 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 the efficiency of Paul Gaffney under the high ball. I remember he caught four or five wonderful high balls as Johnny Corvin gets a yellow card there. Well, I think the referee's probably fair enough on that one. But again, no malice meant in the, in, in, in the high tackle. Curry with the long ball down the top of his inside forward line. It's spilled by Eugene McDonald, but it's... Breaking ball there, the Katie defence seem to be coming out with it. James King for Katie. Katie King breaks the tackle, plays the ball off his right hand side into the midfield. Short's on the ball again in the midfield for Katie. Short takes a look up, tries to find Paul McCormick. McCormick and Paul Gaffney fighting for the ball, but it's Nathan Curry again that sweeps up for Middletown. He plays it to Paddy McBride, who's, bro who's broken free into space. McBride passes it back. Warren Curry takes the shot from midfield. It looks good from here. Curry has put the ball super, over the bar. Super score, super score, long, long distance point. And uh, the Katie man had lost his boot. He had to chase after his boot there. So uh, we got a point, and the man found his boot on the one goal. Absolutely, and the score four points for Middletown, three points for Katie. A fine score by Warren Curry, more known as a cornerback, but he seems to be playing out around the midfield at the minute. So Burke with the puck out, plays it short, looks for Stevie Renahan. Renahan's on the ball, takes Carvel on. Renahan breaks past the first tackle. He plays it on his right hand side down the line to Dylan McKenna. McKenna contests it, was broken in behind Nathan Curry, sweeping up. Curry fumbles the ball in the first chance but gets it, recovers it well. Paul Park Hughes clears the ball down the line. Very, very close to the sideline there. Ranahan has it. Oh, bit of a high tackle there by Carvel. I think Ranahan maybe fell a little more awkwardly than what it looked. Ryan plays the ball across to Paddy McBride. McBride takes his man on, beats the first tackle. McBride takes the shot. 
It's looking quite good from here all the way. Great score by Paddy McBride from Middletown. Again, a, a fairly long distance free, and he just sort of just seemed to, Simon just to stroke that ball over the bar without much of an effort. I think a, absolutely a lovely strike by McBride. I think Damien that that, that the wind is favouring Mc, uh, Middletown and favoured McBride on that occasion oh, look, because uh, there's no doubt there is a very strong breeze blowing down the field. Absolutely, McKernan contests the puck out. Jim Short's on the ball for Katie though, as we see a man down. It looks to be Ryan Gaffney down on the far side of the field. Referee is giving a free here for Katie. I think Gaffney looks to be pretty seriously hurt over on the far side. I see the physiotherapist out with him, and uh, as the Mayor Farna, the water carriers are in with giving instructions. And the game has stopped for a moment or two. But Simon, you know, the way the game is starting to pan out here, um, you know, Middletown has settled a wee bit, but there is a strong breeze blowing down the field, so like they need to be getting in here five or six points ahead at half time. Well, absolutely, Damien. I think, to be honest, after 15 minutes we can tell that it's a better game than last week already but it's a more open game in terms of the the shot selection both teams seem to be more confident in their shooting that they don't seem to be as nervous or they don't seem to seem to be under as much pressure so it's i think so that it's, it's gonna it's gonna maybe lead to a higher score as the as the game moves on but gaffney seems to be up again and the referee's having a quick word with him just to uh, himself and nathan green the referee's just having a small word but the high fielding Simon has been a factor here this evening as it well, has, both by has. both teams. Yeah, well, you know, pa young Paul Green there, younger brother of Nathan, caught a lovely puck out there one time, and Paul Gaffney took a wonderful ball one time as well, so I think both teams are really, really confident in their ability. They're going to show their quality tonight, Damien. Well, the game is about to commence. Mm -hmm. Connor Corbin's on the free for Katie on, his, on, on the, uh, the opposition 65-metre line, so this is definitely a, a scoreable one for Connor. Into the breeze, but I'm sure that he has the distance for this one. So Connor Corbin, 26 years of age, number 11, the real leader in this Katie team. Bends, picks and strikes. It seems to be tailing off just a little bit from here and the ball has gone wide. Well Katie's first wide of the day. The breeze is blowing slightly to the right hand side corner down here from left to right so he was trying to judge that one trying to get it over to the right hand side for the wind to bring it in but he, he didn't Woods plays the puck out quickly nice and top of Ryan Gaffney but Gaffney has broken it down Parry Hughes on the ball from Middleton now breaks the first tackle Woods plays it into Dean Gaffney Dean Gaffney a low ball into the corner looking for Marty Moon but it's it's just gone out over the side name there on the far side Katie ball looks like Barry Breen's going to take this one for Katie Barry Breen, a very, very experienced player. He played a fine game last week, Damien, and uh, certainly one of the more experienced members of the defence there. So Breen has left it to James King. King is positioning the ball. He's getting ready to play this sideline ball for Katie. King plays the ball up the line. Oh, it's, it's cut out, though. Well done. Marty Moon has the ball. Moon. Takes a look up, plays it back, looks for Ryan Gaffney, but it's overcooked the pass. Paul Green on the ball for Katie now. Plays a long clearance in down the right-hand side. Carvin and Nevin racing out to it, but it's Park Hughes in behind. Carvin makes the tackle, but the uh, the ball has gone out for a 65, so good pressure by the Katie forward line there, by Johnny Carvin especially. Yeah, there's no question about it. And I see the linesman there uh, is getting a little bit of uh, uh, verbals down here, and uh, Matt's uh, not for a man. Uh, Mick doesn't take that lightly, so he's telling them to be quiet there, and the fourth official has come in and told uh, the Katie man to back off a wee bit. So uh, Connor Corbin will take the 65 for Katie. Corbin, a very, very experienced player for, for Katie. Football and hurling has to be said, Damien, a very, very good dual player. Again, getting a little bit, a little bit of a dust up here, just a couple of yards away from where the ball is going to be struck from. I think the middle time man is doing his best to try and put Connor off this one. As we said earlier, no love lost between these two teams. Corbin hits the ball, keeps it nice and low into the breeze. That ball looks good. That's gone over the bar. Connor Corbin's first point of the day. And again, a super score, a super score from distance. Even with the the, the middle time man trying to put him off, so it, it, it didn't happen. Absolutely. And score five to four. Fine game so far, Damon Woods with a long high puck out right on top of his full forward Ryan Gaffney, who's come out to the centre forward position and runs right through. Liam McKee coming up, but Gaffney has it. Gaffney plays inside, David Carvel's through in the 21, has a shot for goal, Burke saves it. Joby comes out with the ball again, picks it, he's under a bit of pressure here, plays it outside, Barry Breen has it, and the Katie get the clearance and they live, live to fight another day in that defence there. Parry Hughes fights with McKenna for the ball. Jim Short has it, Jim Short's breaking free, crosses the far 45 metre line, the speed of this man is incredible. Jim Short's right through, takes the shot, pops it over the bar, 
Wonderful score for Katie. Super, super score. He absolutely came hammering up that line with the ball at the end of the stick. Put it up. Took a huge hit after he got rid of the ball, but put it over the bar. Absolutely. That man played a great game last week, and he started off really well so far. So save at one end, but great save by Joby Burke. Gets the clearance in. Another score within five seconds up the other end of the field. Brilliant score for Katie. Five apiece. Long puck out again. James King on the ball for Katie now. Breaks out of the tackle. Gets past Ryan Gaffney. Plays the ball down the line. Jim Short seems to be free again, but it's overcooked. Gaffney, Paul Gaffney plays it in. Looking for his brother, Dean. Dean has a new wonderful catch by Eugene McDonald. McDonald coming out. Plays the ball along the left-hand side in front of Johnny Corvin. Lots of space out in front of Corvin. And Nevin gets the tackle in. Corvin spins round. Here's a man inside if he gives it to him. 19's on the ball. Harvey has it. He plays it across, but it's intercepted by Parry Hughes. Hughes and the Middletown men, the Middletown men seem to have closed this one down. Referee. The referee, I think, is going to throw this ball in, Damien. Yeah, and again, a chance for Katie, but well defended there by Middletown. Mm -hmm. It's a very, very open game so far. The, the Both teams are trying to create a lot of space inside in front of their forward line, especially in front of John Carvin. Carvin and uh, Tiernan Nevin, the Middletown defender, had a great battle last week, and uh, the referee, he's actually given a free in here. Must have, must have played the ball on the ground. Well, there you go. He was closer to it than we were, so... This will put Katie ahead. So Connor Corvin, he scored one already. He's looking for his second score of the day. Picks, strikes, pops it over the bar. Katie in the lead, six points to five. Yeah, and again, a very, very easy score there for Connor Corvin. So, Benton Woods with the puck out. Woods, a member of the Armagh senior team. Woods plays it long. Looking for Marty Maguire. Maguire can test it. Nathan Green, but it's broken down to Connor Carvin. Carvin plays the ball. Diagonally looks for Paul McCormick. McCormick has the ball. Wonderful take inside. McCormick plays it back out to Jim Short. Short trying to create the scoring opportunity. He's well tackled by Kearney McKernan. McKernan dispossesses his man. Gets the clearance in down long on top of the centre forward again. Dean Gaffney and McDonald contesting it, but it's broken through. Paddy McBride on the ball for Middletown. McBride, one score to his name so far. Plays it back out to Cahill Carvel. Carvel trying to break free, plays it out to Dean Gaffney. Gaffney looks for McBride again. Oh, it's intercepted though by Liam McKee. And it's Paul Green on the ball now. Green plays the long clearance on top of the half forward line. Looking for Paul McCormick, but Nathan Curry has the ball. Curry breaking out past his own 65. Plays it inside to Davy Carvel. Carvel takes the shot from distance. Carvel has the effort, but it's tailed off to the white, to the right, uh, the right hand side and wide. Middletown's third wide of the day, Damien. Yeah, and that's from the middle of the field, basically. It was. I think it shows the strength of the breeze there that uh, the Middletown have at their backs. You know, Davy's usually very, very accurate. The breeze must have just tailed off, tailed that one off to the right hand side. Burke plays the ball out. Paul Green on the ball. Big tackle in from Cahill Carvel, but Green still has it. Plays it back to his older brother Nathan. Nathan plays it in on top of Johnny Carvin in the left corner. Carvin has the ball on the 20 meter line, and he's pushed in the back by Paul Gaffney. It's going to be a free in for Katie. Well, there's no doubt about that, Simon. That was a pure push in the back. And uh, he's actually milking it here, so now it's a chance for another score for Katie to go two ahead. Mm -hmm. Well, Connor Corbin, he scored two frees already today. He's be looking, he'll be looking for his third point of the day. As we said with Ryan Gaffney's free out in the 20 metre line earlier, Damien, it's a difficult one, very, very difficult angle, but Corbin's a very accomplished free taker. I'm sure he'll, he'll, have, uh, he'll have limited difficulty in this one. Well, there is the breeze. The breeze is coming across him, so it's difficult enough, but he's close enough at the same time, Simon, mm -hmm. so you would fancy him to put this over the bar. The game has been very, very open so far, Damien. You know, six points to five at the minute, and we've played uh, just over 23 minutes. So uh, we've, we've nearly reached last week's tally of scores already. I think that just shows the openness of the game and, and the quality. It's, it's so much better than what we had last week. So Connor Carvin about to take the free for Katie. Carvin taking a look at the goals. Woods and his defenders in on the line, just keeping an eye on anybody that's moving in to try and distract them. Corbin bends, picks and strikes. And the ball has gone wide. He's probably put it wide this time. Yeah, maybe just took too long on it, you know. Again, I think he was trying to sort of gauge the way the breeze was blowing and mm -hmm. he overcooked it to the other side. A difficult one, a difficult one. So Woods just pucks this one right out underneath us here and the ball's gone out. Mm -hmm. And we await the referee. Uh, the linesman didn't see that, so he's put his flag up. The Katie man says it was his line ball. He's giving it to Katie, yeah. Nathan Green on the ball. He's asking his younger brother Paul to play the ball. Paul played a lovely sideline ball about three or four minutes ago, Damien, so I'm sure he'll be looking for a repeat. 
I have to say the uh, pitch is looking wonderful down there. You know, credit as we said earlier, credit to the ground staff, Noel and Ronan Hart and everybody here. So I think it just helps the, the overall spectacle of the game. It was such a wonderful pitch. Green plays the ball. Long and inside the inside forward line. Johnny Corbin on the ball for Katie. Corbin running through. Corbin gets on to his right hand side, takes the shot. And the ball is going over the bar. Johnny Corbin's first point of the day. And Katie, two points ahead. And Corbin's great skill there just to get away from the man. You know, he just absolutely juked one way, juked the other, and then just flew past him. And away he goes and puts it over the bar. Woods with the puck out again. Plenty of air on it this time. It seems to hang a little bit in the breeze. And then dropping around midfield. Cahill Carvel contesting it. it. Seems to be a scramble for possession there. Nobody really has the ball the minute. Paul Green has the, trying to break out of the ball. McDonald's there as well, but it's a real scrap for possession. A real dog fight over there on that right hand side. But McDonald's coming out with the ball for Katie McDonald. He tries to kick the ball. He misses it. Dean Gaffney on it for Middletown. Gaffney plays it back to Kearney. McKernan has the ball, plays a long ball inside. Marty Moans one on one with his man inside, but it breaks right through. Burke, the goalkeeper, has it, plays the long clearance out right down the middle of the field. Looking for Harvey. Harvey and Liam Woods. Contesting the ball, Harvey gets the better of Woods on this occasion, plays the ground ball. Harvey has it up in his hand, plays it back outside to Connor Corvin. Corvin plays a diagonal ball into his brother Johnny. Johnny has it inside, Johnny's breaking through, Johnny Corvin in for Katie. Great hook, great hook by Kieran McKernan, but Corvin still has the ball. Corvin looking for an option outside him, plays it back outside. Davy Carvel and Paul Green contesting, Paul Green has the ball for Katie. Breaks the first tackle, ref gives advantage. And Paul Green pops the ball over the bar. Another score for Katie. Again, could have been a goal. Probably should have been a goal. Wonderful hook by Kieran McKernan. Very, very similar to what JJ Delaney did to Shane Callan a few years ago. Wonderful goal preventing chance. Goal preventing hook. Long puck out again. Gaffney has it. McBride has it now for Middletown. McBride trying to break the ball through. But it seems to be Jim Short coming out with the ball for Katie. And Connor Corvin has it now. Corvin plays the long high ball. Looking for his brother Johnny. Johnny's going well so far. He's out in front of Paul Gaffney, but Gaffney has this one now. He's, he's dispossessed him well. Pass it back inside to Parry Hughes. Hughes plays a diagonal ball from defence looking for Dean Gaffney. Dean breaks it. He seems to break it to himself, but there's nobody there. Rasheen Keenan coming out with the ball. Dean Gaffney and uh, Marty Moan has it. Played it long and low, but there was Barry Breen was just sitting waiting for the ball there. And it's out around the midfield to Paul McCormick. McCormick and Curry breaks it back inside to the, the Katie half. And the referee's given a push in the back on this occasion. Free yeah. in for Middleham. A needless free to be given away, and this should be a score. This should put another score on the board for Middleham. Mm -hmm. The scoreboard currently reads eight points for Katie, five for Middleham. So I think Middleham will be needing to get this one to get themselves uh, back into the game. Not that they're out of the game, Damien, but I think Katie have all the momentum the last few minutes, and they've got a quite a few scores on the board. Katie have been the form team this last 15 minutes, that's for sure. Absolutely. Ryan Gaffney. Gaffney is three points to his name from Freeze so far. He'll be looking to make that four in the next 20 seconds. Uh, hello to all the boys up there in the uh, Kerry Fox up in North Antrim. Tuned in this evening. Gaffney taking a look at the Cathedral goals. Going through his routine. Ready to strike this ball. Gaffney bends. Picks and strikes the ball. And the umpires take a look at it. It's looking good from here. He goes for the flag. Another point for Ryan Gaffney. Eight points to six. Thought the umpire was actually going to break his neck there. <laughs> he bent that far back. But again, a very comfortable score, Simon. Gaffney's fourth point of the day. Eight points to six for middle uh, for Katie. Now Burke with the puck out again for Katie. Keeping the trajectory a little bit higher this time. Looking for Paul Green. Green has it. Breaks in behind. Paul Green's running right through on goal here. Green. Wonderful speed here. Green's tackled by Tiernan Nevin. Slight block on that ball. Dylan McKenna seems to have it though against Park Hughes. McKenna's breaking through. McKenna's running right through. Still has it. Real scramble on the 14 metre line for the ball. Real fight for possession there. And it's uh, Paul Gaffney breaking out. Oh, bit of a high tackle there. Johnny Corvin. Paul Gaffney seems to be going down with a bit of a head injury. Well, the referee just waited for that ball to come out. And that was it. So... I think if Johnny Corbin maybe wasn't on a yellow card for the yeah, his first incident, he may have got well a yellow he, for that he one. He so he's he, uh, he already on a yellow, so lucky man. Curry plays the ball long down the left hand side on top of Davy Carvel. Davy breaks it through. Marty Maguire has it. Marty Moan, in fact. Marty Moan takes his man on. 
Moan steadies himself, takes the shot, hangs it up in the breeze, and it's drifted out to the right hand side and wide. And so both teams are playing with a two man full forward line, Simon. Absolutely. Well, we said earlier, Damien, the amount of space that's being created inside, it's, it's the, the, both teams are trying to crowd that middle third and uh, making it a real fight for possession there and, and trying to get the ball in fast into the inside forward line. And it's, it's paying dividends so far, especially for Katie into the breeze. Yeah, we'll have to see what Desi McDonald put up for injury time. Burke with the puck out on the right-hand side for for Katie. Plays it long on top of Dylan McKenna. McKenna breaks it through. Paddy McBride from Middletown has it. McBride's breaking out of the tackle. McBride takes a look up, plays the ball on his left-hand side down the line. James King, wonderful catch in the air with his, his, uh, his right hand. Corbin plays the ball long on top of McCormick. McCormick and Johnny Corbin breaking this one inside. It's a dangerous one. Curry has it though. Curry has the ball. And he's won the free out. As well defended by Nathan Curry there, Damien. It was indeed. I actually thought he lifted the ball off the ground, Simon. Now, Curry with a long free for Middletown. Plays on top of Maguire. But it breaks right through to Liam McKee. Liam McKee plays the ball short along the line. Looking for Harvey. Harvey takes his man on, beats the first tackle. Jim Short moving off the shoulder. Short has the ball. Short has incredible speed, breaking right through. Shoots off his left-hand side, but he's put that ball wide, didn't it? Oh, well, he said he was fouled after the ball, but he didn't. He, 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 he put on a burst of speed, but he just didn't get hitting the ball properly. He, uh, he, he could have steadied up, I think. He, he probably thought he had less time than what he actually had, but a great run, an unfortunate finish for Katie. King under this ball for Katie, but Cahill Carvel has tackled King. Cahill Carvel is breaking through. Tries to play it through, but Connor Corbin has it again for Katie. K Corbin plays the ball into his brother Johnny. Johnny's out in front, but Paul Gaffney dispossesses him. Gaffney's breaking out for Middletown. Plays the ball long off his left hand side on the inside forward line. James King, the centre back for Katie, has played well so far. Has the ball, pops it out to Connor Corbin. Corbin tries to break the tackle. The, the referee is given the free against Katie. Free against Connor Corbin for charging with the ball. Cahill Carbon stood up to the tackle there, and the referee gave the free against Connor for, for charging. And Connor's not a bit happy about it, Simon, but I think the referee was spot on. And of course, score 68, so Middletown will be very disappointed playing with this strong breeze down the field and they're behind by two points. Well, I think Katie have, Katie have had the uh, the, the, the better of the exchanges so far, Damien, to be honest, and uh, seem to have settled into the game much better than what, the, what they did f uh, in the first half last week. If you remember, looking back at last week, Middletown has six scores on the board and Katie only had two at the minute. Middletown has six scores on the board, but Katie have eight. So you can see the improvement, you know, in, in terms of Katie's efficiency up front. They've been a lot more clinical up front. But Gaffney has a chance now from the free, about 50 metres out, straight in front of the sticks, to make the score eight points to seven. Gaffney bends, picks, strikes the ball, and it's looking good. It's another score for Ryan Gaffney. His fifth point of the day. The scoreboard now reads eight points to seven in favour of Katie. And two minutes of injury time, so I would say the referee probably blew the whistle when this ball is pucked out. Uh -huh. The referee seems to have the whistle in the mouth. And he has blown for half time. You're 100% right, Damien. So the score is Katie eight points and Middletown on seven. So if you look at the overall picture, you know, there's only one point less scored in this first half than what there was in the, in the whole game last week. So, you know, I think the quality of the game has been absolutely 10 times better than what it was last week, Damien, so far in this first half. And that only augurs well for a, a wonderful second half ahead. Well, both teams are still in the game, that's for sure. And uh, Katie would probably be coming in now a little bit more confident, playing down the hill towards the Cathedral end with the breeze. I know sometimes, Simon, the breeze doesn't really always help you, but probably in this instance, it will be worth two or three points to them. And Kitty, there's no question about it. Kitty have been the best team so far. They have. They've, 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 they've settled into the game really well, and as I said, they're 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 very efficient in their scores. You know, they've got quite a number of scores from play, One, two, three, four, f six points from play, and only two from frees from Connor Corvin. So, you know, Kitty have, have really really settled into the game well. Whereas Middletown have depended on frees. They have five points from frees by Ryan Gaffney, and and two points from play. So, you know, you're 100 right, Damien. Kitty have had been the better team so far. Yeah. Well, what we're going to do, Simon, we'll, we'll take a little break and we'll come back uh, very, very shortly for the second half.
And you're very welcome back to the athletic grounds here. We're waiting on the Katie to come out on the second half. And Simon, I talked to a couple of Katie men there and a couple of Middletown men, and the Middletown men are not happy at all. Mm -hmm. It's uh, I think Katie probably just had the better of the exchanges there, Damien, in the first half. You know, just looking at some of the, the stats there, you know. Katie of five scores, you know, it's pretty, pretty evenly spread out between Paul McCormick, Connor Corbin, Jim Short, all on two points. You know, Johnny Corbin has won, Renahan has won. You know, Ryan Gaffney scored five frees out of the seven points for Middletown. So Middletown at the minute, they, they, they've, they've depended on the frees from Gaffney in the first half, you know, to keep them in contention here. So I think they'll need a big second half to, to really push on. And, but it's all to play for, Damien. It really, really is all to play for in this second half. Well, Katie's out. We're looking to see if there's any changes. We don't see any changes. And of course, Katie now will be playing towards the cathedral end, and that's the, the where the wind is blowing. Whether that affects them or whether that helps them, I don't know. Sometimes playing with the breeze doesn't, Simon. But mm -hmm. you would think the way Katie's playing, it's worth two or three points to them. Uh -huh. Well, the floodlights are on here in the athletic grounds, and uh, I think this is going to make for a, a wonderful second half. You know, and really, what better way to finish them than like playing the game, the, the hurling final, the Lindwoods Championship? Was our man TV Cormac Leonard Championship Hurling Final? And it's under the lights. Second half is on. Ball into Marty Maguire. Maguire has it in the right corner. Maguire from Middletown takes his man on. Maguire seems to be pulled back, but the referee plays on. Back outside now. Uh, number 22 is on the field. Potty Lappin is in for Middletown. Not too sure who he's in for yet, but we'll find out soon enough. Cahal Carvel has the ball in midfield here for Middletown. Carvel breaks the first tackle, tries to play it off, but it's well intercepted. Katie Mann plays it back, but it's a slippy hand pass. Barry Breen has to backtrack to get the ball. Breen breaking out for Katie. The, the left full back. Breen plays it across. Paul Green on the ball now. Double colleges all-star. Played a great first half. Plays the ball right in direct into Johnny Corbin. Corbin break, looking to break it through, but it's just drifted outside to the, the left-hand side and wide. He almost got a stick to it there. And he, he could see exactly what he's trying to do. He did. Woods with a quick pocket. Oh, looks for Cameron Kieran, but a slip past him. And it's, uh, it's Renahan on the ball now. Or John Harvey plays it back, sorry. Connor Corvin, Stevie Renahan. Renahan has it now. On to his right hand side. Looks outside for Jim Short. Jim Short, two scores from play in the first half. Short has his third point from play. Another wonderful score. Great score from Short. And that was just shoveled out to him. And he caught it under pressure, spun around. And just just managed just to get it over the bar in the world. Good score. Katie have up the game here. Uh -huh. And it's the first, first score for Katie. You know, just over one and a half minutes played. So. Ball on top of Davy Carvel here. Carvel plays it on. Oshin Keenan plays the ball down the line. Park Hughes has it for Middlehound. Hughes is dispossessed with Jim Short on the ball again. Short shoulder tackle by Oren Curry. Short gets the ball inside to his inside forward line. Johnny Carvin contests with Paul Gaffney. Great catch by Gaffney. Gaffney breaking out. Break, finds a bit of space. Plays it down to Davy Carvel. Short clearance, but Carvel has the ball. Oh, tries the hand pass, but it's well blocked down by Dylan McKenna. Parry Hughes with a late stroke there, and the referee is giving the free in for Katie. Again, maybe a lazy stroke? I'm not so sure if it's a lazy stroke. I think maybe mistimed, but I think that, that the pressure was created there by the Middletown defence coming out with the ball. They had the chance to play the ball longer up the field, and they tried to overcomplicate it, and it broke down, and uh, you know, it gives Katie the chance here to go three points ahead very early in the second half. And again, this is sitting on the 45, so this should be a handy enough score. Uh -huh. Connor Corbin. On the free, going for his third point today. He's got two points from uh, frees in the first half, Connor, but he, he's played a really, really good game so far. You know, Not just an accomplished free taker, but a, a real leader for the Katie team all over the field. Tiernan Nevin standing just in front of Connor now, trying to, I'm sure, distract him ever so slightly. But uh, Connor's going to be on the ball for Katie. Bends, picks, and strikes. And it looks good from here, Damien. Ball's on the, on the way. It's over the bar. Three-point lead for Katie. Yeah, seven to ten, and Katie have opted, opted the ante since the start of the game, and the breeze has picked up again, Simon, as we look out. Mm -hmm. well, Katie are really in the driving seat now, Damien. The first two scores of the second half, Woods plays the ball out. Looking for his half-forward line. Dylan McKenna's gone way out the field, the half-forward. Cahal Carvel seems to have broken it down, but he's pulled on it. But the linesman has given the ball to Middleton. Yeah, and the, again, the Katie... Men are not happy with that decision, but the linesman, it was very, very firm. Linesman made his decision early and stuck to it. Carvel with the ball for Middletown now. Well, ab absolutely an accomplished leader for, for Club and County over the last number of years. Carvel plays the ball, lovely sideline ball in on top of Paddy McBride. McBride breaks it down to Ryan Gaffney, but Nathan Green has it. Green plays it back to Breen. Breen is challenged hard on the way out, and referee gives a free out. Barry Breen down on the ground. 
and he'll take his time and a wee bit of game management by Katie here just take the sting out of Middletown's little spurt of effort there so 3 minutes and 56 seconds gone in the second half 7 to 10 in favour of the men from Katie and uh, the boys from the other side of Karakachuk are looking good this evening Simon well, you know, it's all to play for at the minute, uh, Damien, but uh, Katie are certainly in the driving seat, three points ahead, first two scores of the second half, and, uh, you know, the, the, the better of the exchanges in the first half too, so I'm sure the crowd here in the athletic grounds are anticipating And a, a good a, crowd has gathered here, and I'm not sure how many's come in, but we'll find out. Uh-huh, I'm sure the crowd is really, really looking forward to this last 27 or 28 minutes of the game, because it's all to play for at the minute. Joby Burke going to take the free out for, for Katie. Burke has the ball between the 13 metre line and the 20 metre line. Burke drives the ball down the other end of the field. Looking for his inside forward line. McCall Carvel has come a long way back to contest that one. Davy Carvel has the ball now. Carvel facing his own goal, but Kieran McKernan there too. Gets the ball up in his hand, breaks out past the first tackle. Plays the ball down the line. Ryan Gaffney contesting with Nathan Green. Gaffney has it, but Connor Corbin has intercepted it. Corbin on the off the left hand side, plays the ball inside, but Park Hughes has read that one well. Hughes breaking out with the ball on his right hand side plays a simple ball to McBride McBride in plenty of space now on the right hand side crosses the halfway line McBride plays the ball infield and it's misdirected though to James King King has the ball for Katie plays the ball half block down Cahill Carvel on the ball now for Middletown oh a bit of a high tackle there and the referee is given the foul I think uh, it's one of the strengths of Carvel's game he, he, he's, he's always looking to try and break past that first tackle and more often than that players have to foul him rather than let them go so on that occasion, Connor Corbin just, you know, Hurley was just in and around the neck. Un unfortunate for Connor, but uh, Carvel has, has won the free. And the referee, for a bit of a uh, few verbals, the referee has moved the ball forward now. So it's a much easier free for Ryan Gaffney. Must take big, big steps in Monaghan, that's for sure. <laughs> well, Gaffney, he's got five points from freeze in the first half. He's going for a sick point of the day for Middletown. Middletown, you could say, Damien, this is one that they need to really keep them in touch here with Katie. There's no doubt. And with the referee moving the ball maybe 20 metres forward, it makes it an awful lot easier. Absolutely. Gaffney bends, picks and strikes. And the ball is going over the bar. Gaffney's sixth point of the day. Uh, and over 900 people here this evening as well. Brilliant. Great crowd in for, for a Friday evening especially, you know. So, Joby Burke with the puck out for Katie. Looks long, wonderful strike by Burke. Going to pa beat past the, the far 45. Looks for Paul Green, but Kieran McKernan has that one. Breaks out, pass it to McBride. McBride for Middleton, across the halfway line. Well chased down by Jim Short. James King with the, the strong tackle. Ryan Gaffney with the ball. Plays a diagonal ball inside, looking for Maguire. It's spilled in behind by Liam McKee. Backtracking towards his own goal, but McKee plays the ball out to the wing. Now that's going to be a sideline ball for, for Middleton. Gaffney looking to play a fast ball. Gaffney has the ball in hand, though. He's going to steady up. He plays the fast one. In fact, Marty Moan has the ball. Takes his man on. Marty Moan. Oh, dispossessed by the Katie man. Paul Green has the ball. Green plays the ball down in front of Dylan McKenna. 55 metres out from his goal. McKenna turns his man. McKenna's breaking through. Running with the ball. Pops it across, but it's well intercepted by Nathan Curry. Curry spoons the ball out to Cahill Carvel. Carvel has the ball again. Well tackled on this occasion by Connor Corbin. Carvel wins it back, however, off Paul McCormick. Breaks the first tackle. Plays a short ball, one-handed to Marty Moon. Well done by McCormick, who intercepted that ball. Nathan Curry from Middleton, though, breaking, the breaking out into his half-back lane. Looks for McBride, finds McBride. McBride from Middleton, taking the man on. Lovely tackle again by the key to defence, and again by McBride. Wonderful dispossession. Some great tackling, some great flicking in there, Damien. There's but no doubt about it, but Katie had a... You know, they have a lot of men back there to try and stop Middleton going through, and they, they've overcooked that ball. And uh -huh. I don't know about that, Simon. I thought maybe it could have been a free out. Could have been a 50 50 one. The referee could have given a free out for, for holding the man up, but he decided to give a free out for, for over for over carrying, but a charging, but over carrying, but a both. And it's a free in for Middletown, and this is another one to keep them right in contention. And this brings them back to within one point. Absolutely, absolutely. And this game is going to go to the wire, Damien. We, we called it early last week about a draw. I wouldn't rule it out at this stage again, Damien, to be honest, even though we're only eight minutes into the second half. It's, it's two really, really competitive teams to nothing between these two teams at the minute so Gaffney he's lining up this free taking a look at the goals the wind into his face the floodlights are on here in the athletic grounds as Cormac Leonard hurling championship final senior championship final Gaffney has the score Gaffney is a seven point of the day Middletown one point behind Katie ten Middletown nine and of course Katie had that great spurt 
And now Middletown is just back in the game here, and it's anybody's game. Absolutely. This game is anybody's game. It's going to go right to the wire. Joby Burke with the pocket. Long, direct, to the right-hand side. Looks for Paul Green. Green and McKernan underneath it. Oren Curry sweeps him behind and has it. Breaks out past the tackle. Plays a short ball to McBride. McBride has played well so far. Finds Cahill Carvel. Long, direct ball by Carvel inside. Looking for Davy Carvel, his first cousin. Davy's tackled well this time by Oshin Keenan. Keenan's trying to break out with the ball. He's on. Carvel has it back though. Well dispossessed by Davy. He's lost the hurley. He tries to play it with his foot. McDonald has the ball for Katie. Eugene McDonald, former centre half back a number of years ago with the county team. Very, very experienced player. Now Paul McCormick, dual star with Katie and Armagh, has the ball, but it's well dispossessed. Kieran McKernan has it. McKernan well hooked by Short. McCormick on the ball again, though. Oh, it's a, a hefty tackle there on McCormick. He seems to have picked up a bit of a head injury, and I think that the uh, the, the Middletown and the Katie players are, are aware that this is a bit of a, a heavy impact. I think players getting a wee bit hot and bothered down below us. I think that uh, Paul McCormick has a has a head injury here. It could be a concussion, but uh, you know, I think Ryan Gaffney credit there where, where Ryan is due. Ryan uh, Ryan realised the severity of the, the injury. And he, he, was, he made sure, even though he's a, an opposition player, he made sure that McCormick wasn't touched at all. You've got your fan club here tonight, Simon. Oh. <laughs> Plenty of young people here. It's great to see, Damon, you know, the, the enthusiasm of the young people out on the field at half time and, and in the stand here as well. You know, it's, it's, it's wonderful to see. It really is. And Katie have the free in just outside the, the Middletown 65. McCormick seems to be okay. That's good, good sign to see McCormick that he's uh, that he's back and in and action. With the breeze blowing down the field here, Simon, this is well within range. Um, well, Connor Corbin, you know, he's scored plenty so far. He's got three points from freeze. He's played really, really well so far. And Connor, with his unique sort of style, I think this is uh, the distance probably should be no problem to Connor. It's whether he can judge that breeze well with accuracy. Connor Corvin on the ball now. Getting ready to take this free. Corvin taking his time. Bends, picks and strikes. He's put plenty of height on this one, trying to draw it back inside. And it has drifted out to the left hand side and wide. A chance. A chance. Katie's fifth wide of the day though, Damien. He probably pulled that one just a little bit, just trying to use the breeze just a little bit too much. Fitton Woods of the pocket now. Primary school teacher in Derry News. Fitton Woods plays the ball out to the right hand side. On top of Cahill Carvalho. Well won by Katie. Connor Corbin breaking the first tackle. And the referee is not given any advantage. He is given the free in for Katie. I think the referee maybe could have played away with that one if Connor had the chance, you know, given the five second advantage rule. But uh, you know, he would probably give the right decision in the end, though, giving the free in for Katie. So Connor with another opportunity. Just missed one previously. He's got three from, three from free so far. He's uh, he supplied the inside forward well well with, with ball as well, Damien. You know, he's been a great provider as well in this game in the first half, especially looking for his brother Johnny and Dylan McKenna inside. So Connor has been on form so far. Yeah, he's playing really, really well this afternoon or this evening here. So, you know, he's probably one of the standout players. He has in, in the final. He has. He's been a brilliant player so far, you know. Over the last number of years he's been a great player as well for Club and County. Corbin with the free and it's looking good from here. Another score for Katie. And a super strike, and he absolutely knew that was over the bar as soon as he struck it, because he just turned and run back to his position. Uh -huh. Corbin's fourth point from, from freeze today. Woods with the puck out, looks to his left-hand side. Plenty of height on this one, looking for Ryan Gaffney. Gaffney underneath the ball, breaks it down. And it's, I think it's Paul Green on this ball. Green plays the ball in field, but the linesman has given a line ball. Oh, I don't know if that ball was out, because that's right in front of us, Simon, here. Play is continuing, but the, the referee has the... Ref the linesman has the, the, the flag up, and he's convinced it's a line ball. So. Well, he's obviously, the referee has well, said, OK, play on it. The referee has decided to play on. I've never seen that before now, to be honest, but McDonald trying to break out with the ball with, for Katie. McDonald plays it up to the half of the midfield. Kieran McKernan has the ball, breaks out for Middletown. McKernan, a long ball inside. It's hanging on top of Burke and Davy Carvel. Burke has it, but he spilled it. It's spilled again. It's breaking, th breaking free. McBride has a chance. 20 metres out. Plays it to Maguire. Maguire pops it over the bar. One point game again. Yeah, and Toby had loads of time to get that ball away. But as you say, he dropped it. He's put on the serious pressure. Couldn't get it up. And the ball was broken out and put over the bar. And credit the Middletown forwards there. Davy Carvel and, uh, and, and uh, Maguire inside. You know, they put the, the, the back line under a lot of pressure. Joby and, and the other defenders. And McBride got the ball. Popped it out to Maguire. Maguire took the simple score. And of course, this game is brought to you live from Linwood's Armagh TV in this county final, sponsored by Cormac Leonard Commercials. 
Here and Nevin on the ball now from Middletown. Nevin, high tackle, but the referee plays on. Good challenge there at around the, 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 the 30 meter area. Renahan plays it back out. It's a 50 50 ball. Carvel and Paul Green contested. Paul Green played a great game so far. Pops it inside to Renahan again. Renahan looking for space. Tries to find the man. Liam McKees there. Plays a diagonal ball inside into the full forward line. Johnny Carvin contesting. Paul McCormick has it as well. McCormick and Orrin Curry fighting for the ball. McCormick plays it outside. Showing no ill effects of the challenge from two minutes previous. Johnny Corvin trying to break free. Corvin has the opportunity. Corvin has the shot. And Corvin has the score for Katie. A super strike under serious pressure. He just got that up and absolutely hammered it over the ball. And again, that puts Katie two points ahead. Johnny's second point from, uh, from play today. So he's playing a really, really good game inside now. 12 points to 10 at the minute. And we've an injured man out in front of us here. Uh -huh. Simon, don't know what happened. I think, it's, I think it's Paul Green. I think he, he... No, sorry, not Paul Green. Liam McKee, in fact. I think maybe Liam... Took a bit of an impact from the uh, the previous tackle. Just as he played the ball inside, you know, maybe a late challenge on him, but no, nothing of any malice. I well, think just, it was just as we have a wee break here, I'd just like to congratulate James Doyle. Sure, you know James. Absolutely. James has been over playing a uh, handball in America, and he got to his semi-finals of the the uh, or the finals of the his division, mm -hmm. but he pulled a hamstring, grade two pull, and James. Knowing James Doyle, he done everything to try and play in the final. So he got two gold medals, so or two silver medals. So congratulations to the big man, and he he's deeply involved in the hurling our man. Absolutely, James is our, our our physical trainer, you know, and has been there for years, and a wonderful man and a wonderful family as well. And credit to, to James and Maraid and the rest of the family, you know, they're terrific handballers. And unfortunately for James' injury, he just couldn't move too much in the final. But uh, you know, credit to James for for all of his work and uh, an absolute gentleman too. Just as we see there, I think it's uh, Oren yeah. Fullerton coming Orn in yeah, for, for Dylan McKenna. Yep, yeah, on the Kitty team. Uh -huh. Dylan played well so far now, he's, he's heard a good game, but Oren's a, a completely different player. Very, very small compared to Dylan, but he, he likes the ball in front. Carvel, great catch from Puckout. Carvel breaking free now, McBride has the ball from Middletown, the halfway line spills it. James King on the ball, loses the hurley, plays it outside to Connor Corbin. Referee plays on, real scramble for possession here. McBride fighting for the ball, McBride breaks free. Plays it outside. Cahill Carvel on the ball now. Carvel two points behind. Trying it and he's drawn the foul. The referee has given the free in. There'll be another chance for Gaffney. Gaffney's got seven so far today. He'll be looking to make that one more, Damien. And the way he's going, it'll be it. Well, it's a good opportunity for Ryan. Just over 45, maybe 47 meters out from the uh, the KD goal. Pretty central there as the. Uh, the, the Mwere Farna, Adam Toll, he's giving Ryan a bit of a hand with the towel, make sure the, the, the hands are dry, you know, conditions are getting a little bit greasy out there, you know, as the as the uh, the wind is staying nice and strong, you know, it's, it's a difficult free for, for Ryan now, so into the breeze, up the hill, his team two points behind, it's a big opportunity for Ryan for Middletown. He needs this one, Simon. Mm -hmm. So, Gaffney goes through his routine, Steadies himself, bends, picks the ball, drives it, umpires take a look, they're happy, white flag is raised, Ryan Gaffney's 8th point of the day. And again, that was a pressure score and it was needed. Absolutely, one point game, Damien was 12 points for Katie, Kajal Lad Yarig, Middletown, 11 points, Middletown to Fena. This is all to play for, 17 minutes, 17 and a half minutes gone in the second half, anybody's game. There'd be 13 plus maybe two or three or four minutes of injury time. Lots of time, Damien. Anything could happen in this game yet. Joby Burke with a long puck out to the right hand side. Plays the ball on top of Harvey. Harvey has the ball, breaks it through to McBride. Orrin Curry now on the ball from Middleton, trying to break free, but he's well bottled up by the KD defence. Potty Lappin tries to play the ball out, but it's all intercepted. Harvey on the ball for KD again, plays it outside. Barry Breen, the experienced Barry Breen, we're number four, but he's playing in around midfield at the minute. Looks for Paul Green, young Paul Green, double colleges all-star. Green has the offer. Green pops the ball over the bar. Wonderful score. And I would have to say that's probably the score of the evening. I would suggest so. Paul Green's first point of the day. 13 points for middle uh, for Katie. 11 points for Middletown. This is anybody's game yet. Katie just have a slight advantage. Playing slightly down the hill with a slight breeze at their back. No, this is anybody's game at the minute, Damien. Well, look, there's no question about it. There's only, like, you know, the referee seems to be having a chat with the uh, the lines man over on the far oh. side. I think he's maybe chatting to one of the water carriers. No, there's one thing with Mick Love. Well. Mick, Mick does not like people chastising him or, mm. or back chatting to him. 
Uh, and I was talking to Mick at a football match a couple of weeks ago, and he says, you know, you're mad down here. You're so tribal, it's unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Well, credit, credit the officials at the minute because the, uh, the officials, have, they've, yeah. they've done a good job so far. They've kept on top of most things, and uh, they've let the game flow well. Woods with the puck out now for Middletown. Plays it long into the half-forward line. It hangs up there for Marty Maguire. Maguire tries to draw it on, but it's broken back in behind. Potty Lappin fighting for the ball with Paul Green. Lappin breaking out. Breaks past the first and the second tackle. Plays a lateral ball across looking for Ryan Gaffney. Lovely accurate ball. Gaffney has it. Plays it inside. Now Davy Carvel's on the ball. Carvel gets past his man. Picks. Carvel has it. Tries to play it outside. McBride's in on goal. He drops the ball. Joby's out on top of him. The ball's still there around the 14. And it's anybody's ball at the minute. McBride seems to have it. McBride plays it back outside Gaffney. Gaffney outside to Marty Moan. Moan has the opportunity. And Moan has the score. One point game again. Yeah. Middletown had to work very, very hard for that one. The ball was in a lot of traffic there. Trying to get it up. Played out. Great work. Cut over the bar at the end. Could easily have been a goal though if McBride had... had, had, had just I mean, took his eye of it. He did. He just took his eye of it. He maybe thought that... He was under a little bit more pressure than what he was, you know, and credit to, to Burke, the goalkeeper, he came out on them nice and fast, and uh, the defence smothered the opportunity, so uh, I think Middletown will be content with the score, though once the goal chance disappeared, the second best option is popping the ball over the bar, and that's exactly what they did. So I mean, it's 20 minutes gone, 10 minutes left, there's only a point between them. Anybody's game, Damien. Burke with the puck out. Pretty central this time, on top of Renahan and Connor Corbin. Breaks right through past him. Johnny Corbin's first of the ball. Corvin has the ball, has the opportunity to shoot. Corvin takes the effort. Corvin has popped the ball over the bar. Johnny's third point of the day. And again, he found loads of space, got into space, spun round and put the ball over the bar. And again, that's great work by Corvin. It was, it was. I think it shows that the, uh, he anticipated that ball coming in behind, you know, and he read it well. He was out in front of his man. Woods with a pocket now, out the left-hand side. Woods on top of Ryan Gaffney. Gaffney breaking it down to himself. Kearney McKernan onto the ball from Middletown. Plays it inside. McBride has the opportunity here if he can get this ball into his hand. McBride going down the line. Ball's very, very close to the end line. McBride's fighting for it with the Katie defender. That's Sashin Keenan. And it's Paul Green who clears the ball. Green clears it, but it's only as far as Parry Hughes. Fluffy Hughes, as he's known in affectionately in around Middletown. Marty Moan on the ball, breaks it right through. But Eugene McDonald has it, but Moan, great tackle again. Marty Moan's fighting for the ball. The Katie defender coming out with it. Barry Breen, long clearance by Breen up down the line. Uh, young Oren Fullerton just in as a sub a few minutes ago. Fullerton has the chance. He shoots off his left, but he's pulled the ball wide. And again, probably should have been a score, Simon. Under no pressure there. Katie, sixth wide of the day. Substitution in 15 for two in Middletown. That's Brian Malone coming in for uh, Katie. Sorry, for Middletown. Brian Malone coming Dean in for Gaffney. Middletown for Dean Gaffney. Brian, more known as a corner back in his day, Damien, but he seems to be... Uh, Going up to the corner forward position again. Chris McCann looks to be coming in as well for Middletown. Mm -hmm. I think he's maybe going to come in the next break and play, not just at the minute. Seems to be a Katie man down on the far side. Barry Breen with a green helmet there. The experienced Barry, green, Barry Breen. it be very, very interesting to see who McCann comes in for at the minute in this Middletown team. He's a very, Chris McCann, very, very lively corner forward, Damien, and he usually plays very, very close to goal, so it'll be interesting to see who he comes on for. There's a small break in play here. And uh, Barry Breen's receiving a bit of treatment over on the far side. The uh, linesman has his board up there. It seems to be Marty Maguire who's coming off for Middletown. Chris McCann. And Chris McCann's going to come in for Middletown in the inside forward line. Maguire, I know I was talking to a few Middletown people before the game. And he, he, had a, he picked up a quite a quite a serious leg injury towards the end of the, the, the drawn game last week. And credit to Maguire, he's, uh, he's recovered well in the six days. And he's, he's been able to play... Uh, 52 minutes here, so uh, I'm sure it hasn't been easy for him, so fair play to him. Ryan Gaffney contesting, Kieran McKernan has it. He's tackled well by James King. Connor Corbin on the ball for Katie now, Corbin. Breaking free, well blocked down. Jim Short has it, he's trying to break past the tackle. Short gets the clearance in, but it's only as far as Parry Hughes. The linesman has given the, uh, the sideline ball as well. Linesman has given the line ball. Jim Short must have taken the ball just out over the line ever so slightly. Ryan Gaffney standing over this one. I think he might leave it to Cahill Carvalho. 23 minutes and 25 seconds gone. Score 12 to 14 in favour of the men from Nafina. I'm oh, sorry, from Longjig. Kitty. Cahill Carvalho on the ball now, sideline ball. 
He's looking at his options now. Malin's making a move inside. He's not going for Malin, he's going for Kieran McKernan, but it's well intercepted now. Paul Green on the ball for Katie. Green towards the sideline, plays the ball in field to young Orrin Fullerton. Bit of a height, height, height mismatch there, but Fullerton has broken it through. Parry Hughes has the ball. Fails to pick it first time, gets it up in the hand, breaks past the first tackle now. Carvel's on the ball, taking a solo run. And the referee has blown his whistle. It's a free out for, uh, for Middletown. Parry, Fluffy Hughes, he was just fouled on the way out there, Damien. He's played well so far. And it'll be very interesting to see how Katie get their clearances through now. You know, young Orton, Orton Fullerton there is marking him. And Fullerton was probably up to Parry's shoulder. He wouldn't be, he wouldn't be as, as tall as him, you know, but he, he likes the ball in front. So, But there's bite in him. There is. There's bite in the young man, and he's played well over the last couple of years. Curry with the long ball on top of the forward line now, looking for Ryan Gaffney. It's broken right through. Brian Mullen and Dean Gaffney. David Carvel, in fact, David Carvel has the ball. Carvel well tackled. Well, that's going out ball is going outside and wide. I think maybe middle time maybe would have been better, maybe just hitting that along the ground, Simon, across the goals. There was an opportunity there to pull on that one, and uh, Davy decided to raise it uh, just at the, at, the at the time. So chance was missed but the ball has gone wide but it shows Damien that the goal chances are creating are themselves that the, yeah. you know Middletown have created a couple of half chances as we'll say and only for a fumble here or there and maybe a, another spilled ball or a, a misplaced pass Burke with a short puck out now plays at the gym short short in front of his man plays it long into the corner but Nathan Curry's one on one with his man McCormick. Nathan Curry's raced out to the ball. He's beaten McCormick. Turns on to his left hand side. Plays it short down the line to McKernan. McKernan fumbles the first time. McKernan breaks through. Dispossessed by the Caney man. It's a real scramble for possession there. Paul McCormick on the ball. He passes it back outside to Harvey. Harvey's blocked down, but the ball skies up into the air. And it is. Well, the umpire has given a wide ball. And the referee has agreed with him. He's given the ball wide. Could have easily been a 65, Damien. You know, the ball s seemed to skate up off uh, Harvey's stick there. And uh, it could have easily been a 65, but the umpire and the referees, they give a, a wide ball. And they're the ones that are down closer to the action. Woods with the puck out now. Plays on top of Ryan Gaffney. Gaffney lets it break past him. Gaffney's turning, facing the, the, the Katie goal. Trying to play it to himself, but the ball's going out over the line. And the linesman has given a, no, a, that's a, a line ball to, to Middletown, but it seems to be... No, that was a Katie ball because it came yeah. off... <laughs> it's come off the middle times man he basically kicked it out I think Simon I think I think you're right Damien I think that the uh, the ball should have gone the other way but the lines man uh, he decided early on that it was going to be a middle town ball but uh, maybe that's the, the benefit of, of seeing things at a bit of height yeah small break and play here now one of the, the Katie and players again. is down injured I see number 20 Connor McAnallen is warming up now for, for Katie is the helmet on he's ready to go just over three and a half minutes of normal time left, Damien, you know, and four point, 14 points for Laviar, Katie, 12 points for Middletown, Nafena. Two-point game, but the game is by no means over yet. Well, it's in the nothing part, and if this ball, if there's a score comes out of this, and it should have been a line ball for the other way, Simon, who knows? But there'll be three or four minutes, I think, of injury time with the injury and the subs coming in. we we'll wait to see because we'll be waiting for Daisy McDonald to lift the the clock to tell us how many minutes will be played. Well, the referee's not getting too uh, too flustered here. He's just taking his time. Uh -huh. Just over two and a half minutes of normal time left. There's, there's a second substitute warming up for Katie. Number 22, Mickey McDermott, as well as number 20, Conor McAnallen. So it'll be very interesting to see who they come in to replace here in the, the next, few next few moments. As we said, there's a small break in play as the... Uh, Katie Mullins down. He seems to be receiving a bit of treatment to his head or his nose there. He has the helmet off, so we're not quite sure who it is at the minute because the uh, the back of his number is it's actually James King. He's just sat up there, number six, James King. King, as, as, as we pointed out last week, Damien, you know, King has recovered really, really well from a, a very serious wrist injury over the last couple of years. So as we said last week, it's great to see him back playing. and He's playing so well. Last week played playing so well today, so... Credit to James for, for getting himself back into great shape and back in the centre half, back in the Katie team. Well, there has been a, a fur long injury, and I suppose when we talk about injury time, going back to the match last Sunday, Simon, the All Ireland semi final, there was a two and a half minute injury time in the second half. The referee only played three minutes injury time mm. in total. Well, I think it's. Uh, it's certainly something that is, is going to be uh, 
Yeah, interesting to see how long the referee plays today because James has been down receiving treatment to his head for the last two minutes. So it's, uh, I think there, there could be maybe four, maybe five minutes injury time. So we'll see Paul McCormick's gone off. And Conor McAnallan has gone on. And number 19, John Harvey has gone off as well. And number 22, Mickey McDermott has gone on. So double substitution for Katie. McCormick has played well, you know, he's played played well up front for, for Katie. Got two scores early on in the game and I don't know what is Paul McCormick is, but he must be like a hundred. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Paul Paul will be in his late thirties now and you know a wonderful servant for Armagh and both coach football and Herlin and absolutely for Katie too, so it's uh it's great to see Paul playing so well today. Cahill Carver plays the long ball in from the sideline, McBride has it, but he's tackled and the referee has decided it's a free in frontal tackle by Nathan Green and there's an opportunity now for Gaffney to make it a one point game it's one that he needs now for Middletown Damien and 30 seconds left of the game plus injury time Simon so again you may be right we could be getting into I think there might be extra time after this if it goes level yeah so the, there may be extra time well we're not counting any chickens yet but uh, it, 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 we wouldn't rule it out either Damien you know a draw because if, if a friend gets this one over the bar makes it a one point game Going into injury time, we could have three, maybe four minutes we're predicting at the minute, so it's anyone's game at the minute. And there's the, the clocks and saying 30 minutes are up, Simon. That's right. Now, Gaffney, taking a look at the goals. Katie Marlon is trying to put him off in front. Gaffney bends, picks, and strikes. Ball's off the post. Oh, it came off the post and James King has it. Breaks out for Katie. Ball into the midfield now. Connor Carvin on the ball for Katie. Carvin has the opportunity. 64, 54 metres out now. Carvin plays it high and long. But it is tailed out wide. It's Katie's seventh wide of the day. Big opportunity. Six minutes of injury time. Six minutes of overtime to be played. Gaffney on the ball now from the pocket. Wonderful catch by Gaffney. Plays it infield to Marty Moan. Right down the middle of the goal. But Eugene McDonald's coming out with Katie. McDonald has a long clearance on top of young Fullerton. But Pori Hughes is under the ball too. Hughes and McAnallen are fighting for it for Katie. And Oren Curry's breaking out with the ball. The ball is, is a bit of a stalemate there on the 45 metre line. But it's Nathan Curry breaking out now. The referee has the whistle in mouth. But he's playing the advantage. McKernan has it. Plays it outside to Gaffney. Gaffney. Oh well tackled by Jim Short. Great tackle by Short. And the ball is out. It's a line ball. Going to be a sideline ball for Middletown. A wonderful piece of defending by Jim Short. Jim Short has played brilliantly well, to be honest, Damien. You know, three points from play from midfield. A real contender for man in the match if Katie win this game. Gaffney going to play the sideline ball for Middletown. We've played one minute and 40 seconds of the six minutes allocated for injury time. Two point game. 14 points for KJ Lavyarg. 12 points for Middletown, the Fena. Gaffney with the line ball from Middleton. Gaffney, lovely trajectory in the ball. Plays it nice and high in field, but it's well taken by the Katie defender. I think that's Paul Green there. Paul Green has won the free out. Paul Green has won the free out. A wing half forward, number 12 on his back, but he was in the half back lane there for that one. Damien, a wonderful piece of defending for such a young player, too, only 19 years of age. And that was a pressure pick up there, and he was getting a lot of attention as he coming out with the ball, but great work. That sends a good signal around the rest of the team. Absolutely. We're, we're standing tall here, ladies, and we can take any pressure that's been put on us. Joby Burke now. He's going to take the free just inside his own 45 metre line. I would suggest that Burke is going to land this one right in the edge of the square. And he gives this one absolutely everything. Lands 15, 14 metres out. Brian Mallon coming to the ball. Middletown defender has a Porig Lappin. Lappin gets the clearance in, looking for McBride. McBride fighting with Nathan Green. Green has it, he breaks it in behind. It's Paul Green on the ball again. Paul Green on his right-hand side, well hooked by Oren Curry. Green still has it, though, onto his left, looking for our options. Has the ball, has the effort off his left-hand side. It seems to be hanging up close to goal. Bit of a shamozzle in behind goals there, but it's, uh, it's gone out for a wide ball. As Johnny Carvin and Gaffney were contesting that one. Woods with the puck out, plays it nice and fast. Looking for Cahill Carvel. Out on the right hand side at the midfield. Carvel with the ball. Takes his man on. Carvel running directly at goal. Beating Keenan for pace. Can't, Keenan can't get near him at the minute. Carvel has it. Releases it. Nathan Green has it for Katie though. Breaking out with the ball. Plays the hand pass to Connor Carvin. Carvin's lost it though. And Marty Moan has it. Plays it in field to Kieran McKernan. McKernan looking for McBride. There's an opportunity here for a score if McBride gets his head up. Pops it inside for Curry. Curry has it again. Plays it inside. David Carvel has it. 
David Carvel seems to be brought down and the referee is given a free in. Free in for Middletown. He take the point, he let go for the goal, Simon. I would suggest that a point would be a good option at this stage. You know, six minutes of injury time. We've, by the time Ryan hits this one, there'll probably be about a minute and a half left of injury time. So they'll be hoping to get the score and then to uh, to win the puck out, look for the next score after that, Damien. But dramatic finish here, absolutely, in the athletic grounds. The, the Cormac Leonard uh, Senior Hurling Championship final. Gaffney picks, drives the ball over the bar. That's a one point game, and we have one, two minutes left, Simon. So again. Possession will be vital here. Absolutely. Now Burke will be looking to play this one long into the half forward line. Gaffney was ninth scorer of the day. It's anybody's game at the minute. One point lead for Katie. Possession in this ball is vital. Ball's broken in behind. It's McKernan has it, but he's missed his pick. Connor McAnallen. McAnallen has been pushed in the back. He pushed in the back for Katie, and it's a free in for, for Katie. Megan Allen did well to pick that ball there under pressure. And a needless uh, free, Simon. Absolutely it was, needless. It was. Megan Allen did well. Now he had a low centre of gravity to get that ball up into his hand. and It was just a bit of a, a bit of a silly free to give away. But it's a pressure free now for, for Katie, for Connor. Connor Corbin. He's done really well so far. He's got four points from freeze today so far. He's been a real leader in the Katie team. and It's just over 35 minutes. 35 minutes have been played here. So just over 35 minutes. So. We're getting close to the end of the game, Damien. And if Connor gets this one, it's a two-point lead. Now, two-point lead's a dangerous lead. Oh, the, the wind is, the rain is sort of drifting in front of the camera here. We're trying to get the camera clear so you can see what's happening here at the end. Connor Carvin. Connor's just about, we'll say, about 30 metres out from the goal. Slightly to the right. Serious pressure here, Simon. But if this goes over the bar, this will probably carry Kitty over the line. Corbin with the chance. Corbin has popped it over. Corbin's got the score. It just sort of came in at the end, Simon. So it's a two point game, so. Two point game, Katie 15 points, Middletown 13 points. Woods with the puck out, plays it long. Middletown need a goal at this stage. But it's Eugene McDonald and Stevie Renahan has the ball. Back to McDonald, McDonald gets the clearance in. Looks for McAnallen again. McAnallen wins the first ball. Pass outside to young Fullerton. Fullerton plays it inside to Connor Corvin. Corvin running right through. Corvin has an opportunity here. Will he take the point? Will he take the goal? A well hooked. Great hook. The Hurley might have been thrown there. We're not quite sure. Nevin has the ball for Middletown. Trying to break out. Plays the ball. Kieran McKernan, the referee, plays on. We've played over the 36 minutes. We've played six minutes plus injury time. Davy Carvel in his own half back line. Bends, picks. Has the possession. It's loose. Referee playing on here. And the ball is going loose. The Katie man has it. Seems to be Johnny Corvin on the ball. Plays outside to Renahan. Renahan has the opportunity for Katie. Has the shot off his left hand side. Has the score. Three point lead for Katie. That could be it. Well, that could be it, Damien. Another substitute coming in from Katie. Running the clock down 24. Oh, it's over. The referee is blowing the whistle. And Katie are the county champions. 2018, the Cormac Leonard sponsored championship. And we have to say, Simon. They deserve it. They did. They did. They, it, was a, it was a brilliant game. It was a brilliant game compared to last week. You know, last week was a, a much tighter affair and it was tense, you know. And Katie, you know, they, in terms of scores from play, Damien, you know, they've, they, they have a range of scores from play. A wonderful game. A really, really a brilliant replay of the of the Cormac Leonard Senior Hurling Championship final. And credit to Katie. Credit to Middletown as well. They, they had a great game. Deserving champions for the last number of years. And this year, fair play to Katie. No question about it, but you have to say, Katie, they set the stall out in the first half, Simon, and that was probably what carried them over the line because, you know, the, against the breeze, they played really, really well, and they were starting the second half as well. They answered a few big calls as Middletown tried to get scores up, so you have to say, Katie deserved that. They did. Well, you know, they went in, as you said, Damien, a point ahead, playing into the breeze in the first half, and if you look at the, the, the score in the second half, they won, the, they won the second half by two points. So overall, they won the game by three points. You know, and uh, I think that uh, Katie, you know, they seem to have more more energy up front. They, they, they created a lot of space up front into the into the full forward line in the first half, and uh, you know they, they did really really well to find Johnny Corbin inside. And I think credit to young uh, young Jim Short there in midfield. He had an exceptional game in midfield. You know, full of energy, and really really played a brilliant game. Got uh, Jim Short got three scores from play too, and I think that was. That was a massive sort of massive impact for him personally. Connor Corvin as well, number eleven for Katie. Their free taker got five scores from freeze, but his impact overall, you know, he set up scores for, for for teammates, his brother Johnny, and others inside. And you know, he was a real leader in the Katie team today. And of course, 
Isn't James King come back from injury? Absolutely. King is back from injury. He played really well as centre half back. And if you look at the, the three players that we mentioned, that's the spine of their team six, eight, and 11. You know, and, and, and I think Simon, that, that, that if, built if the you're platform. Strong, if you're strong in those positions, you're always in with a chance of winning the game. Absolutely. Always. Absolutely. Well, if you look at the, the statistics, you know, Ryan Gaffney, he got nine scores from freeze. And, and outside of that, Middletown got four scores from play. You know, and if you look at the Katie stats, Katie got a lot more scores from play. I was just calculating everything now. So, you know, I think Middletown were a little bit dependent on Ryan's freeze to, to, to get their scores on the board. But I think Katie, they got more scores from play, deserving winners today. And of course, Katie become the my champions for 2018. And these two teams have been battling gallantly over the years against each other. So uh, well done to Katie. A fantastic result here in the ecclesiastical capital of Ireland once more where we have uh, had another cracking game brought to you live on Linwood's Armagh TV round the world and further afield even because up to the space station Simon believe it or not we have we have on good authority that the astronauts was tuned in and be saying what's that game they're playing down there man? <laughs> <laughs> absolutely you know and I think that the credit to Middletown too you know they've, they've been great champions over the last three years and, and could easily have won the game last week could easily have won the game today but, but credit to Katie they were deserving champions today and well done best wishes to, the, to Katie and the Ulster Championship as well yeah, well Simon we, we, we'll, we'll stay live on our here for the presentation uh, hopefully we'll get the the Katie men over to the the centre of the field here I see the chairman going down there and uh, Nicky Savage our chairman he, he'll present the cup I presume and there's Joby and Joby is the captain Mm -hmm. Joby Burke, the goalkeeper, you know, played. You know, credit to Joby, especially last week, and you know, we saved a penalty, made another great save last week. Kept his his team in the game in the first half last week, and kept them in here this evening too. Absolutely, absolutely. But if if Joby hadn't have done that last week, he wouldn't be up in the stand now. You know, ready, getting ready to lift the, the trophy. So, credit to him, credit to the Katy team, and and well done to both teams. But uh, congratulations to Katy winning the championship this year. And of course, this is the start of our championship uh, season here on Linwood Arma TV. We will be bringing you the football games in the next couple of weeks when they start here on the Friday and Saturday evenings and Sunday evenings over this next couple of months where we'll be bringing you uh, uh, a lot of live games, Simon. And uh, what an initiative here, Linwood's live Arma TV, bringing you games to all our people all over the place. Absolutely. You know, it's a, it's a wonderful thing, you know, Arma has been very forward thinking and Linwood's RMR TV is, is a wonderful, wonderful project and you know, to be able to stream the game to people in Ireland but outside of Ireland as well, Damien, it's, it's, it's very special, you know. We had people today that we know watching the game in Ballycastle, Kerry Falls, but even last week we had people in Canada getting shout outs and everything like that. So it's wonderful, do you know what I mean, to see that, that people are watching our games, watching our, our national sport all over the world and we're as I said earlier, we're very, very lucky, we're very, very privileged to be uh, to be patrons of this wonderful game. No question about it. And of course, as we look down, we see Katie coming over here for the presentation. And uh, we await. We await the presentation and we stay with you for the presentation. Just to go back to the, uh, you know, the statistics of the game, the Katie had 11 scores from play and, uh, and they got five frees by Connor Corvin. And, uh, the, you know, they did seven wides compared to Middletown's four. I think that that shows the, 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 the slight dominance that uh, that Katie had in the in their play, and congratulations to Katie. <laughs> we're just going to let the board. I want to welcome you all here today to our Cormac Gannon Commercials Senior and Board and Champions event today. We're going to be presenting the Cormac Gannon Commercials Senior and Board and Champions event today. We're going to be presenting the Cormac Gannon Commercials Senior and Board and Champions event today. I want to thank our CCC for the work they've done to bring both teams here this evening and get our championships all paid off. I want to thank them very much. I also want to pay tribute to our stewards who have been feeling never let us down here. I want to congratulate both teams on two hard sporting games. Not an option, not a given. I want to, when there's a time there always has to be a loser. Uh, but I want to congratulate for the time, the Gallant Gooners. They have been part of this championship in Armagh over the past three years. They have represented their county at Ulster and the Lion Series of Bayland. They can put their heads up high, and I have no doubt that they will be back again. So well done, Lynn Pine. To Katie, this is your night.
you come into this thing as probably another people told their girls, but you know what I mean? As a person wants you, you come in the back door, you are certainly going to front. It was a marvelous achievement over two days. You fought for every ball with intensity, with pride, and you've done your club and your community proud. So it gives me a real honour to present the Cardinal of Glory Cup to the captain of the Katie Van Der team, Joey Borg. Thank you. 
pretty quick. What I want to say at this time of this is the spade man today I want to give a huge thank you to uh, Liam Corbin, to me he's Mr. Katie, he puts in the same amount of work behind the scenes that goes on hold, doesn't want any credit for it. Okay, but Liam, we know how many you've done first Liam, thanks very much for it. The man is not here to imagine glory, but I'm sure even the young ones around me here, he's probably coached down the single one of us and Penny for him. And the amount of work that he does is absolutely unbelievable, and he's transferred to this same people that's last number of years. So I know he'll be making a phone call, or he's got a phone call already. And please call him and go back and celebrate us out here week. To, to another man, Sean King, uh, we said at the start of the year he's probably the most intelligent man in football in Ireland we have ever came across. Uh, everybody says that he's the easiest man to get along with, the easiest man to talk to. And thanks very much, Sean, for having him to for us for the last number of months. And yeah, that's it. To Frankie Green, uh, to me, Ever since he was under the age, Frank Green is probably the best coach that I've ever seen from Drew Keighley. He knows his heart from the inside out, and the passion the man has for this hurling club is absolutely unbelievable. I'd be glad to see him back in the seniors, and I hope to hope God for the next 10, 15, 20 years that Frank Green will be the forefront of the East and senior teams. So, Frank, thanks very much for having me. And finally, the man, not many is home. Uh, but I'm sure you will hear him looking about the sideline. But uh, I've never seen a man from outside the town of Cayley that has so much passion with this club and so much passion with this uh, early team. Anyway, I've spoken to him after two minutes, I love through Rick Walker. We have tried to get him back in this town in this last four years, and thank God we got him here today. So, Pat, from the Adam Last Club is here, Pat, thank you very much for having me. And finally, once we get these cups on the gate, up the scenes everywhere, because we're going to celebrate the whole gate people with. And you're very welcome back here and Simon, we're just going to wrap it up, but uh, congratulations to Katie, hard luck to Middletown, uh, Joby, uh, he was playing that well, he decided to continue on here this afternoon, and uh, why not, it means a lot to Katie, so Katie are the 2018 uh, champions, and just before we finish, we have to say, again, to our handballers that was played in America. Yep, uh, just so the RMA official uh, Facebook page has tweeted, uh, well done to the Megan McCann of the Eugene Quinn Handball Club. She was crowned the under under nineteen girls uh, wall ball uh, world champion in Minnesota. So uh, as we were saying about James Doyle and his family earlier on, congratulations to Megan as well. So well done, and uh, she now uh, joins joins forces with Wexford's uh, Cora Doyle in the doubles competition. But also uh, hard luck to Aidan Devlin from the Eugene Quinn Club. He was beaten in the semi final of the four wall Masters B grade. So. Armagh has had great success in this World Championships handball, so fair play to everybody involved. Yeah, so there we go. Armagh people taking the sporting world by storm, both here and America. And again, thanks to Simon for another brilliant uh, commentary this evening in the Harlan final here. Well done to Katie. Thanks to all the lads behind the scene here. We've a, we've a middle time man behind us here, and he's not very happy, but Sean, don't worry about it. <laughs> that happens. And of course, to the cameramen and the camera women here this afternoon bringing this game. And thanks to everybody for tuning in. And of course, thanks to Linwood's Armagh TV and thanks to Cormac Leonard uh, for sponsoring the Armagh Championships. Simon, we'll get to do this all again very, very soon. Thanks a million. Thank you very much, Damien. So thank